All right then, so now I want to start to create a store more geared towards authentication rather than this dummy example. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of the points right here. We don't need that anymore. And we'll get rid of update points as well. We don't need that particular mutation. And in fact, what we need to do is also get rid of the code that we use in other components which uses the points. So let's go to the home components and let's get rid of up here all of this stuff. We don't need that anymore because we're not going to be working with those points anymore. And then down here, we're still going to import the store, this use store function and grab the store. We don't need the points though, so we can get rid of that. And we don't need update points either, so we can get rid of that as well. And we can get rid of these things, rather these two things right here as well. And also I'm going to get rid of the computed property because we don't need that anymore inside this home component. And if we kept it in and didn't use it, then we're going to get an error. Incidentally, you might also get an error if we save this component now because we're creating this store, but we're not using it, but we will later on. So don't worry about that error for now. Okay. So now over here, I'm going to create a property called user in the state and that's going to keep track of our user and I'm going to initialize that to be null. So to begin with the user is going to be null and then if we log in or sign up in the future then that user will be the current user who is authenticated. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a new mutation function to update that user. So we'll call this set user and then we take in the state as the first argument and then the payload as the second argument. Now in this case, when we call this mutation function in the future, then the payload is going to be whatever the new user is. So if they just logged in or signed up, it will be their user object, which comes from Firebase auth. And that includes their information like their email or maybe their display name, etc. Now, if a user logs out, then we call this again to update the user, then the payload will be null. All right, because then we're going to set the user to be null. So all we need to do is say state.user to get the user property and set it equal to whatever the payload is. That's either going to be the user object of the user that's just logged in or null if they just logged out. And then also what I'm going to do in here is just log a message to the console so that we can see whenever this occurs. So I'm going to say console.log and then inside here we'll say user state changed and we'll output the user as well, the value. So state dot user okay just so we can keep track of what's going on when we do these different things like log in and log out all right so we can save that now and we can also use this now inside our home component just to test it out so we already have the store now what i'd like to do is maybe just log out the user property on the store state to see what it is i know what it is it's null but i just want to see it logged to the console right here so i'll say console dot log and it's going to be the store dot state dot user and that should be null. Now what I'm going to do is also commit a new mutation. So I can say store dot commit and we'll commit the set user mutation, which is the one we just created right here, set user. And we'll pass in as the payload. I don't know. It could be anything. Yoshi. So that is the new user, just a string called Yoshi. Now, we won't be doing this in the future. This is just to test out the new mutation to see the initial value and also to test out this mutation as well, all right? So let us try this now in a browser. All right then, so what I'm gonna do is just refresh and then we can see straight away the initial value of the user, which is null. And then we can see user state changed and Yoshi. And we get that because we committed that mutation set user and inside there we updated the state to be the new payload value which is that string yoshi and then we logged that to the console remember okay so this is all working now we have our store set up with that simple mutation set up as well and going forward we're going to be using that state and that mutation to control the user state in the application 